Thank you, uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, would like to welcome uh, the witnesses. I'd also like to welcome uh, Patrick Murphy here behind us at the Irish Southwest uh, Fishermen's uh, Association, and also Cormac Buck at the IFSA, and those two individuals have worked very hard to try and, I suppose, make fishermen's lives a little more easier in, in what is an extremely, extremely difficult time. And I hope uh, that this will be the first of many uh, meetings that we'll have with the SFP going forward, and maybe the, the organisations that are there, and ourselves as a committee, because there is a massive, massive bridge there that needs to be uh, that needs to be built between uh, the, the, both the, the, man, the man or the woman on the ground and the SFP, and it's quite obvious to the whole country, maybe the whole world out there. Um, I'd wish to welcome you, Mr Hayes, and your colleagues here today, uh, and for us having the opportunity to ask some questions that we have of you, both in respect of your appointment, the policy changes that appear to be on the way within the authority, ever since your appointment and your discharge of your duties in your new role as Chairman and sole director of the critically important Sea Fisheries Protection Agency, SFPA, in circumstances where the Sea Fisheries and Maritime Jurisdiction Act of 2006 stipulates that there should be three such directors. I know many of my colleagues today will join me with me in offering you, congratula you congratulations in your personal, on a personal level while wishing you and the SFP every success in discharging so critical a role in circumstances where the future sustainability of such an important resource as we have in the seas surrounding our small island nation must surely be achieved in conjunction with the ensuring, ensuring the viability, sustainability and socio-economic health of our widely scattered, often remote and island-based coastal communities whose people must, as those most intimately connected with the living resources of our seas, be entitled to derive the greatest economic benefit from this resource. Now, if you don't mind, obviously I've got 15 minutes and everybody else and I have to respect my colleagues need to get in here. That my questions are simply yes or no. Um, some might require just a minute answer, and I, I might appreciate we keep it there because I have a, a lot of questions. Um, when a senior position is filled, could you, uh, Mr. Hayes, you might explain to me, when a senior position is filled in the SFP, the announcement is made by the Minister for Agriculture and Marine, as was in your case, Mr. Hayes. Is that, is that the case, yes or no? Uh, yes, Deputy. So the appointment so is made that, under that, the Maritime Jurisdiction Act 2006. Okay. That sets out the process for the appointment. Okay. The appointments are made by the Minister in accordance with that legislation. Thank you. That's yes or no. Perfect. When the SFP take the owner of a fishing vessel to court, the SFP is represented by two senior civil servants. Am I right? Cecil Beamish and Josephine Kelly from the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine. As this has been the case throughout the past five years, is this the case, yes or no? No, definitely. Okay. And if it was the case, uh, then how can the SFP declare itself to be acting as a totally independent body? But, but no is the answer to the first question, Deputy. The SFP is independent in the performance of its duties. The two officials that you've named work for the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine and have no function in relation to the Sea Fisheries Protection Authority. And have they, have they represented the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine in any cases? You'd have to ask them that, that Deputy. I, I, I don't know the answer. Well, Hopefully. I do know that answer, actually, Deputy, because I know they have represented the Department, but n not the SFPA, certainly. OK. Um, uh, you might please outline the official working relationship between the SFP and the Department, uh, DEFM. So the official working relationship. Yeah. So the SFPA is an agency that's independent in the performance of its duties. Its uh, role is set out by this House under the... Uh, sea Fisheries Maritime and Jurisdiction Act 2006. Um, our funding comes through the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine through that vote um, and is voted by this House through that department. Um, the department has a uh, uh, responsibility for corporate governance of the organisation. And outside of that, that's the only role that the department has. Sorry, I'm just checking with my colleague here to see if there's any other... Yeah, so the, the state has set out a code of practice for the governance of state agencies. Deeper Department of Public uh, Expenditure and Reform has set that out. So there's an arrangement, a performance contract between the department and the SFP set out under that um, code of practice for the corporate governance of state agencies. Thank you. At the last SFP appearance, and Dr. Susan Steele is, is, has, has moved to a different uh, job and wish her the best. Um, before the joint committee, the, uh, Susan uh, Steele claimed that there was a good working relationship between the SFP and the industry and rep representatives, but this committee has been strongly advised that this is not the case. Out of the following representative groups, please inform us which one are, uh, are more the SFP has a good relationship with the IFPA, the IFPO, the IFSA, the ISWFPO, the ISEFPO, the KFO, 
the islands that POP. I'm leading on to another question. Are any fisheries cooperative nationwide? The, the, top, the topic today is yeah, I'm on to that. Way, That's is, my is, next. Is the way in, is the way in of, of fish, and in fairness to ask uh, the, the chairman, has he a good work relationship with an organisation? That's not a fair question. No. Well, yeah, but it's something that they, they're, uh, I think the SFPO have been continuously stating that they want to work uh, with uh, the organisations. I could be totally wrong here. Maybe they have a great relationship with every one of them, but we certainly need to know if they have with, uh, one above another because no, that's no, how no, much no, we no, said no, out there. No, no, no. Okay. Don't have to My next question is so, okay, throughout the Kitty Biggs blue whiting controversy, the SFP publicly insist that they continually uh, offer the option to these vessels landing that they could indeed use the pelagic uh, flow scales, but without actually saying that the SFP were ordering that this state-of-the-art system declared suitable by the Irish High Courts as being fit for purpose, have the element of water removed from the system, and therefore that this option was just a different method of dewatering or dry landing the fish thereby making them of no use for human consumption processing. Can you share your thoughts on this, please, Mr Hayes? Sure, <clears throat> sure Deputy. Uh, first of all, in relation to the, uh, the pier side weighing device, um, we've, we've got to make a distinction here between the 19 landings out of 20 and the one landing out of 20. So the obligation is that we would control, supervise one landing out of 20 to enable the other 19 to be brought to the factories and weighed or weighed on that pure side weighing device, um, which is owned by the industry. Um, so they have a, an option whether they want to weigh the 19 out of 20 in their factories or on that pure side weighing device. In relation to the, the 1 in 20 that we need to supervise the weighing of, there's currently two options open to a master landing in Killy Beggs. One of them is that the fish is pumped from the vessel into the pure side weighing machine and in turn um, placed into a tanker that has been pre-filled with water and pre-weighed on the weigh bridge. Following the, uh, the, the, the position of the fish in that pre-weighed tanker, it's brought back to the weigh bridge and weighed again. One weight is subtracted from the other and the result is the weight of fish in the tanker. The second option that's open to the master is to, uh, or the operator, is to discharge into uh, an empty tanker that has been pre-weighed. The fish are pumped into it with the water that they were originally in. It is up to the operator to um, uh, take uh, off as much water as they feel they can without interfering with the quality of the fish. They then go and weigh over the weigh bridge and that's recorded as the official weight of the fish. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Hayes. Uh, under whose instruction are the SFP Im implying methods of monitoring and regulation that are not being used anywhere else in the EU? Are such decisions taken by yourself, uh, Mr Hayes, or by the SFP management, the board, or whoever they are? Uh, we'd appreciate uh, Are the instructions handed down from above? So, Deputy, the, the, as I said in my opening statement, the default position in, relaying, in, in relation to fish landing is that they're weighed at the point of landing. Um, there uh, is some unique aspects in relation to Ireland in the way that um, particularly bulk pelagic fish are landed. But I let my colleague, uh, Dr O'Mahony, um, deal with the general landing conditions, uh, how it is in relation to the regulation, and what the difference is in Ireland. Thank you. Sure, thank you. So, um, the, the instructions are set out in the EU regulations. We're the regulator. We implement the regulations. The regulations come to us from the legislator, including the House of the Oireachtas, and we, 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 we implement those regulations, Deputy. Um, the, as um, Mr Hayes has said, the default position, the starting point, the baseline of the regulations that fish are weighed in, immediately on landing, um, there are potential derogations whereby fish that weighing can take place after landing, but that authority is not delegated to SFPA or to any authority in any member state. It, it, it requires uh, approval by the EU Commission. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just looking here at a couple more questions. Uh, what, uh, Mr. Hayes, what is, in your opinion, uh, what is your opinion on the introduction of the remote electronic monitoring and the deploying and use of remote cameras? So, Deputy, this is a matter that's in this, the policy sphere at the moment. Um, it, it, it is not contained in any regulation at the moment. 
and we don't, as a, a, as a Sea Fisheries Protection Authority, comment on matters of policy. And would you please will you say, give us your opinion on how this technology is not deemed sufficient for control purposes in a factory setting? Sorry, could you repeat that, Deputy? I said, would you please give us, in your opinion, on how this technology is not deemed sufficient for control purposes in a factory setting? Sure, I'll, I'll ask my colleague, Dr. Mahoney, to address that one. Sure, so this, this tool, um, it's, it's a control tool, Deputy, which does add some assurances. For example, the risk of fish being put over the weigh bridge without the, uh, a flow belt without the flow belt being even turned on. It manages that risk if we can see the flow belt moving and the, the clock clocking up, basically. But there are risks which it does not manage, so the risk that it, that flow belt might be underweighing, so a kilo might be coming up as a kilo. So it has some assurances, as with all control tools, there's no absolute control tool that provides 100% assurances. This, they help, but they're not onto themselves a 100% solution. Okay. Um, should not you, as a sole member of the board of the SAP, support stakeholders in their view that commercially sensitive information come into the hands of the SAP should not and must not be shared with the public other than in accordance with the law? Uh, I, I would agree with you, Deputy. Yeah. Uh, is this data that is held by the SFP not subject to the laws on confidentiality of data and data protection of both the EU and Ireland? Yeah, yes, it is, Deputy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, just uh, we'll say. And, so, uh, can I, can I, I just Deputy? clarify which data it is particularly, Deputy? Well, different data. That's, that that comes before you. Like, is it protected? You know, it doesn't get out to the general public. Uh, I may be wrongly construing something, but if you're referring to the CCTV data, we don't hold those data. Okay, right. Uh, just in relation to um, um, Mr. Hayes, you might inform the Joint Committee as to your own appointment uh, from the AFM to the head of the SFP to replace the outgoing Dr. Susan Steele, who sat on the interview panel. And how many other candidates were interviewed? So I actually don't have that information, but I'm not sure that the chair would consider it. Yeah, no, no, my, that's, that's not the subject that we're dealing with now. Okay. Well, I have enough questions for now, and yeah, thank you. Okay.